So you've decided that you want to buy some gold or silver and it's going to be real physical stuff. But there are just so many options to choose from. It can be very daunting. So today I want to focus on some of the different options that are out there and their pros and cons for you, the stacker that wants to buy gold or silver. Backyard Bullion here and a warm welcome to you all joining me for part three of my complete guide to investing and stacking gold and silver. Now we've already talked about the reasons why you might want to buy in the first place and whether gold or silver is right for you. But now I want to focus on some of the different options that are within gold and silver because there are a plethora. In fact, it can be incredibly daunting for new and seasoned stackers for all the different types, coins, bars, older coins that are not 999, new coins, modern releases, proof coins even, poured silver. The list is actually quite large and I don't pretend that this video will encompass all of them because there are a plethora of different options and not every single one is right for everyone else either. There are different markets which require different amounts of time and energy and research to go in before you can get out. And exit strategies is going to be one of my next video topics which really should inform what kind of silver or gold you're looking to buy. Now that said, all that we're talking about here today is just my own opinion and experiences, sharing some tips, hints and tricks. It's not financial advice, it's there to get the brain juices flowing so you can make the right decision for you. And that's the most important message to take away from today's video. So let's dive in and talk about some of the different types of silver and gold that you might want to consider. Now one of the first things that everybody will think about when you say I'm going to buy some silver or gold is a big fat bullion bar. Now of course size is important, uh, everyone tells you that size is important, but with silver it can often work against you because just buying a big lump of silver like this, a kilo lump of silver, you can't split it up, you can't have smaller denominations coming out of it. Technically you can, you can chop it up or melt it down, but that's going to require a lot of time, effort, energy and not really very practical. But what bullion bars and various other bullion products like this might yield is a quick sort of turnaround if needed. You know, they're very liquid in the sense that they have particularly low premiums, maybe not on silver if you're in the UK, but outside of the UK, you know, low premiums on this kind of stuff that you can, you know, really kind of put your money in and then if you need to get it out, you're probably not going to have too much risk. More so perhaps with gold than silver. However, getting a kilo gold bar is not necessarily the real smartest option in the world. It's just all your eggs in one big bar, basically. So coins, coins would be the next potential option. And yes, there are plenty of different coins out there. In fact, started with the big coin. Let's start with the little coin. There are huge amounts of variety for coins from various different mints around the world. I mean, there are literally thousands of, if not hundreds of thousands of designs out there that have come out over, certainly even my time here on, uh, on YouTube. I've featured enough of them on my channel. Um, so it can be very daunting about what type. You know, a lot of people in the US say US Eagles are your best bet, but to be quite frank, you know, that there are other coins which are lower in premium, which don't carry as much potential headache when you look to get out the other end. Uh, so, you know, for example, in the UK, Britannia's capital gains tax exempt, which is wonderful, fantastic. Uh, even things like the big 10 ounce coins here, those are capital gains tax exempt as well. We'll do a video on taxes and capital gains in the future, I'm sure. But for right now, all you need to know is that coins versus bars, coins are definitely an option. And the benefit of coins instead of bars is that you can get lots of smaller, you know, denominations. You can basically get all the one ounce coins, the two ounce coins, even a 10 ounce coin. You'd, ha you'd have a little bit more flexibility, I think, than having a kilo bar because if you just needed to release a little bit of money or you wanted to sell some of it because the price has gone up, then you can. You can just sell a couple of coins rather than a couple of bars. One of the bad things, though, about coins and sort of modern bullion releases like this is that you'll find that they do tend to have more of a premium. And what I mean by premium is their inherent value above, well, sorry, their value above their inherent metal value. So a premium is the amount that's added on top of what the metal would have cost. Uh, and coins you'll find often have that because they do have more uh, manufacturing in them in terms of producing dyes and producing the coins. So bars versus coins is always an interesting one. And I think for the vast majority of UK stackers, it's a no brainer that you go for coins instead of bars because of the capital gains tax exemption status. Now there are plenty of other coins 
options out there than just modern bullion coins. You can buy older scrap, silver and gold coins, coins from history, which are exceptionally special. Um, you can get them in a whole host of different shapes and sizes, from constitutional silver in the US to old British silver coins in various different um, purities. It's you know There is a huge range of choice, and you'll often find with those coins that the premiums on them are pretty low for some of the kind of generic stuff. When you start getting into you know, rare date peace dollars and things like that, you will certainly be looking at higher premiums on them. But they do represent a kind of different way of stacking. And the same is for gold as well. There's this huge, very desirable market on sort of pre, what's called pre-33 gold, uh, US gold. This isn't US gold, but it's still old world gold. It's got this wonderful look and feel to it. It's got history to it. And some of these will appreciate quite well in premium over time. But ultimately, it's it really is still just kind of cheaper bullion, perhaps. Um, it's not necessarily as practical, though, in terms of uh, liquidity. Sometimes people just want the 999 pure or for example coin shops or bullion refineries or anywhere that you might want to just go and try and sell everything at once. They'll probably give you less money if they're just scrapping this stuff and sending it off to the refinery because this has to be actually refined up from either 90% you know, here or I think these are 80% these Mexican coins. You know they have to be refined on oh no, it 720 so they would have to be refined up uh, you know to the 909 pure for reuse in you know in the world. So from that perspective uh, you know Older world coins have their benefit, have their uses, but a lot of people prefer the pure stuff, 999 or better. Um, in fact, 999 or better, that's an interesting phrase. So you, you do get 49 silver, 59 silver coins. Personally, I don't really see too much benefit in having uh, anything more than sort of four nines, but you know, four nine silver is nice. Three nine silver just works as well. Now, another option is poured silver. Poured silver has seen a huge amount of growth over the last six, seven years of myself being pouring. I was in the sort of second wave of silver pourers. Um, silver, well, poured silver is an interesting one. It's a fantastic object to have, to hold, to enjoy. Uh, often will come at high premium though. Certainly in the uh, in the context of small producers, small pourers with larger overheads and you know producing it as a small hobby. You're, you're factoring in the time it takes for somebody to make these rather than mass produced bars and you're counting perhaps on lower mintages of certain items. Mintage is another factor that comes into things like coins. Of course bars don't really have defined mintages. Some of the older uh, you know refiners did have caps on how, how many they made but it's not particularly common. But coins for example definitely have a uh, you know a fixed mintage some, well, they certainly have a fixed mintage after the years gone by. Some will have an open, unlimited mintage on them until uh, basically orders are fulfilled and then the end of the year comes. But most coins will have a fixed mintage and that sometimes can play into a factor uh, of what you want to get. Uh, another example of stuff out here which is interesting, I've got here a gold gilded white lion of Mortimer coin. Now gold gilded and coloured coins are definitely something that you can invest in. They are more at the higher risk end of the spectrum I would say than others. Um, you know they have their place but their market is very very unique and different and it often is not liquid and it takes a long time to look to get the good returns out. Uh, and you can see how here all of these decisions should be linking into your exit strategy. How are you going to get out of coins? And that brings me on to proof coins because these I think are some of the most interesting and potentially you know, potentially lucrative coins out there, but they do have their limitations. What I will say as well, they can be very lucrative, but they can also be big flops. There are a lot of proof coins out there now that go for significantly less than they did directly from the raw mint or from any, you know, big mint around the world that creates them. But every now and again, you get coins and coin sets which do exceptionally well. But taking a proof coin like this into just your local coin star store or a bullion dealer, you're probably not going to get very much over spot price for it. it. Might just be because that bullion dealer is trying to pull one over and just take you know as much profit as they can, or they just don't know, they don't care. They're going to throw it into the melting pot, and away it goes. So, with these proof coins, you often have to factor in where are you going to sell it, how are you going to sell it. Is it going to be through private auction? Are you going to sell it privately yourself? Are you going to get it graded and have it sold? Uh, you know, on an auction site, for example, there are plenty of different options out there for people to factor in for proof coins. 
Graded coins is another option. I've got one slabbed coin out here. You know, you can look to buy coins in their perfect condition. So a graded coin, we'll do a whole video on graded coins at some point, explaining everything about them. But graded coins in a perfect 70 or an MS70, um, you know, these are very desirable in the right circles. But again, it's about finding the market, finding the right buyer for things at the other end. And ultimately, it's gonna come down to what your preference is because one of the biggest things that anybody will ever tell you is that if you don't enjoy what you're buying, then why bother? And for me, I am uh, I have a very eclectic taste when it comes to investing in gold and silver. I have a little bit of everything, but my, my favorite thing to have of all is just plain old bullion grade golds. Gold where you don't care about the condition because you can just take it out, you can feel it, you can feel the weight, the density, you can enjoy it and it can enjoy you, I like to think. Uh, you know, it is easy to liquidate, it's cheap to buy over spot price and it's easy to liquidate, get out of. The difficulty with silver is that the premium on this stuff is very high and you really do need to take the time to find a buyer. But if right now I went and put this listed up on somewhere like the Silver Forum or here on YouTube, if I just said, made a video going, I have gold at 1% over spot or even spot or even 2% over spot to be quite frank, I think I would get quite a few emails coming in asking to buy it because it's just so desirable and so liquid. So a whole host of different options there. I hope that's given you guys a little bit of an overview of uh, the, the options that are out there. I haven't really kind of I suppose I've sat on the fence a little bit and not really given a you know, definitive answer of as to what is best. And that's, I think, the most important message to take away because there really isn't a right answer. You can have people who solely focused on graded coins or you know, pure silver coins or old constitutional silver or just giant bullion bars, proof coins. There are markets for all of these things and some will have different benefits to others. And I hope I've given you guys a little bit of an overview of things to think about for those different options. Um, if you've got any thoughts, tips, hints or tricks, then please do share them down in the comment section. I know that new stackers and seasoned alike get a lot of benefit from hearing what people have to say who've been there, done that and got the t-shirt. That's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this part three. If you have and you want to see parts one and two, if you perhaps haven't seen them yet, there's a playlist linked down below and uh, you can check out all of the videos from here and also into the future, I guess, where they will all be as well. So go and check those out. Any love you can give to the channel with likes, comments, shares, and subscri subscriptions would be incredible. And we'll see you on the next one. A big thank you to you all for watching. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.